Hello, welcome to JLo Artist YouTube channel. Thanks for joining me on this artistic adventure. Today, we'll be working with charcoal. So you'll need your number two or HB pencil, a kneaded eraser, and use your oldest, rattiest kneaded eraser. This charcoal has a tendency to mess up a kneaded eraser. And uh, a piece of charcoal, anything you'd like. Uh, you'll need a cotton swab for blending, and let's get started. Thanks for being here, by the way. Always a pleasure to draw with you, and I'm glad that you're willing to draw. And I, again, this is not easy, but it can be very, very rewarding. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to use our number two pencil. We're going to design everything with the number two pencil. Then we'll finish it all out with the charcoal, and we'll blend it all with our cotton swab. The kneaded eraser is just there to clean up anything and to pull out our highlights and, you know, lighter areas. So, should all have that stuff standing by. Let's start out with our number two pencil. And we, uh, we want to do his hair. That's one thing that I want to do. He is kind of off to the side a little bit. So, what you want to do is just start out with an oval to say this is where his head's going to be. And I, I, I always go over it two or three or four times or more until I'm happy with my oval. If you're drawing on the side of your pencil, all that can be easily erased. It's where we do this that all of a sudden you get into trouble. Okay, this is detail mode. This, and it's okay to draw this way when you're in detail mode. But when you first start out, draw with the side of your pencil. It's faster. And you just throw in if you want, just... You, you've got to have a point of reference. And so you just throw in whatever you feel, whatever you think you need, to get that point of reference. You can even start out and say, well, I, I can see where his hair kind of comes out of his head there. And uh, you can just kind of start doing some little curved edges like that to get the hair. Again, we're just blocking it in. This may not be exactly where it goes. But block it in. Get that shape of those things in there. And when you're drawing people, we're really not drawing eyes and nose and mouth. We're drawing shapes of shadows. Remember, one of the rules of value is the shape of the shadows reveals the shape of the form. And so whatever your form is, if your shadows are right, your form comes through. So here we're just trying to get as much information as fast as we can. And I'm not being concerned about each individual highlight and hair and things like that. One thing you may not know is your eyes are right in the middle of your head. So if you look at the, the size of his head and you come down about right in the middle, and you can, you can even use your fingers kind of like calipers to make those those marks, and I'm just going to throw in a line like this. His, his eyes aren't flat. They're not straight across. His head is slightly angled. And so when you throw in your, your eyes, that angle of the eye, that just helps you to get the angle right. It also helps you to get your eyes so they're level. And then you can throw in the nose, which is the same angle, and it's just a, just a little shadow. So you could just, with the side of your pencil... You just do this little shadow. Nobody cares if it looks like a nose. We're just doing the shadow. The mouth is the same way. You want to just throw in that line. You want those all to be parallel. We're kind of looking up into his face a little bit. Normally, your, your ears are as high as your eyebrows. But here, because we're looking up, his ears tend to be a little bit lower, about level with his eyes. So if that's the level of his eyes, you can just say, well, the top of his ear is going to be about right there. And the bottom of his ear is about level with his mouth. So if you come out straight from his mouth, there's the bottom of his ear. And you can throw that in. It's just a little C shape. There's one there. And you can barely see his other ear. So if you go just directly on the other side and just... Just make a little mark, little mark. That's that's about where his ears go. 
and they just barely see that little little bit of an ear over there. And if you want to, you can you can just put his eye in there and just so well his eye's about that big. But when you do and you think, okay, that's about the right size, just think about this. You've got one eye here, so I'm going to measure it with my pencil and say, okay, if that's the size of his eye, then I'm going to have about one eye in between. I can make a little mark there, make another little mark, and that's about the size of his eye. Now, this eye is going to be slightly smaller than this eye, just because he's turned away just ever so slightly, but not really enough to make a difference. So right now, you just think to yourself, okay, if that's the eye, if that's the length of the eye, I've got one eye in between my eyes and then one eye over here. That's going to help your eyes to get them about the right size or the same size. I think a lot of people have troubles making one eye too big or one eye too small. And then instead of doing a round iris, because he's smiling and that's pushing his eye up into his cheek or his cheek up into his eye, all you need is little brackets. So there's a little bracket there and a little bracket there. A little bracket there and a little bracket there. And you can adjust those. You can make them bigger or smaller, whatever you think you need. But the bottom of his eye is kind of flat. And the top of his eye is cutting off the iris. Yeah, it's, I, I've done this little arch. And everybody's eyes a little different. We'll have to adjust this a little bit. Some people's eyes arch a little bit more on the inside. Some people's arches, you know, a little different, but but really it's just an arch. And here's the bottom edge or my center line. Your eye, your iris fits right on top of that center line. And again, I might have to adjust it just a little bit. But again, you need that point of reference. You need to at least make a mark so that you can see where it should go or where you think it should go, and then adjust from there. Here's his eyebrow. I'm just going to throw that in as a dark shape. No hair. It's just a little shape. And that may not be exactly right, and that's okay. I can add or subtract to it. There is a little line that goes eyelid as it fits into his his eye his his eye socket there it's just a double a parallel line so you've got your eye lash line and you've got your eyelid line then right above there's where the hair goes and already i i can see that i've made it a little bit too close to the eye i'm gonna take my kneaded eraser and just pull that back out portraiture by the way is one of the hardest forms of art there is because everything has to be so exact. You can even take the shadows that you see, and if you just make little, little edges, like around his, his eye right here, he's got a bunch of smile lines. We don't want to use lines, we want to use values shadows and you can even do the little glasses remember don't don't use the tip of your your pencil because that makes it grind into the surface you don't want to grind that in yet and so i'm just going to do some little almost rectangles around his eye for his glasses but you don't even need to connect them because there are areas that are really super light Everybody gets that idea. They understand those are glasses. You don't even need to connect them. But if your lines are kind of soft and fuzzy and you're, you're struggling with drawing like this, that's normal. I have to adjust this eye a little bit. That's better. My little, my initial space for his nose was too low, so I'm just gonna, just gonna pick that up a little bit. 
and adjust it. It's all about adjusting. So notice I'm not trying to get detail here. I'm not trying to put lines in there. I'm just getting what I can in there. My mouth was too, too low, and that's okay. Remember, it was a point of reference. Now I can look at that and go, oh, okay, I can make that a little higher. And the cool thing is, is I don't really even need to erase because all that stuff's going to go. But if it bothers you, if you're like, oh, that line bothers me, go ahead and just take your kneaded eraser and just touch it. It'll come right out. Now, anything that's dark, including his facial hair, the shadow that comes down his face over there, you can lightly put that in with the edge of your pencil. And you don't have to worry about the lighter areas. You just throw that whole thing in. And then you can take your kneaded eraser and come back in. And just do a little touch here and there. And if it's not in the right place, that's okay. We'll get it in the right place because we're going to keep adjusting and adjusting and adjusting until it is right. This ear that was over here, way too big. That's okay. This is why we don't use a, the point of our pencil. If we did, those, those lines would never erase. They're there forever. When you're doing hair, too, the edges of the hair are more important. Like right here where the hair kind of touches the face, you just leave those little lines kind of into it. Inside, you can, you can scribble, scribble, scribble inside. So all those values that are inside the hair, but it's the edges that make the important difference. And again, everything here is easily erased. We could erase this whole thing and never see any line. That's why you use the side of your pencil. These are just scribbles, by the way. I get this all the time. I'll do little programs and people say, gosh, you look like you're just scribbling. I am. Just scribbling. We, t we call it controlled scribbling. So once your, your proportions, once your eyes are in the right place and your nose is in the right place, or at least close to it, then you can shift over to your charcoal. And nothing here really needs to be erased because your charcoal will cover this and it'll blend with it. Sometimes I'll clean up my edges with my kneaded eraser uh, before I go back into it just because I like it kind of clean. Now, I'm I'm ready to go into this with my with my charcoal. Again, we're going to keep adjusting and keep adjusting. Um, if something's not big enough, we'll we'll adjust it, make it bigger. But right now with the charcoal, what I want to do is just pick up doing the same thing I did with the graphite. But now it's going to go darker. And the more I lay into it, the darker it goes and the harder it is to get rid of it. So that's why I start this way. 
I'm going to start out with his eye. And, and that's just because that's what I like to do. Start out with the eye. I'm just going to go in and just put in some very soft, dark tones. And I, like I say, I always start with the eye. Because it's important. You know, when people look at a drawing, especially a drawing of a person, they look at the eyes. If you can nail the eyes and make them look good, then everything else will be just fine. The, the eyes, there's a couple things I know about the eyes. Everybody's eyes this way. You've got a dark ring around your iris. And because it's cut off on the bottom and on the top, all I need is the sides. So here's one there, and there's one there. They're little, like little brackets. I also know that there's got to be a shine in there. Now I can see one right here on this eye. I can barely see one there. I don't really see one here, but I know it's got to be there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, well, if there's, if there's a shine right there in that eye, there's going to be a shine in that eye. And so I'm just going to pick it out, and just the pupil part is going to be this little half moon. And I'm just going to leave that little spot of light there. There's got to be a shine there. I also know that any of these little wrinkles that are around there, if I were to use line, they'd look like crevices instead of wrinkles. So what I'm going to do is just anticipate doing that with my cotton swab. Although I need a little bit of line, a little edge there. So I'm just going to take this and just, just ever so lightly throw in a little edge there. Just with the side of your pencil because we're anticipating this to smear. We want it to smear. So any place you see some darkness, just scribble in some charcoal. Because we're going to blend all that. Ever so lightly. Remember, charcoal is, is one of those things that you don't need to press hard. Just treat it very gently. Let me even throw his glasses in as just a little edge. There's one there. And you know that they go all the way around so that you can you can pick one up. These are called subliminal line where your eye makes that connection that these are connected. You don't need to connect them. If you, if you need to, you can put a little dot in the middle. And then your eye makes that connection that that's all one piece. We'll learn more about subliminal line next week when we do ink. Here's some more. I'm just going to leave that edge alone and just pick it up over here. And then it gets really light against his nose, so you just leave it alone there. And you can see that rectangle happening there. Can you erase charcoal? You can. Um, if you've ground it in, it might not erase completely. But this little, uh, this little eraser... That's why you have it. It's, it's a little more aggressive. And you are welcome to use that. Kneaded eraser will take out some of it. There's a shadow of his glasses. 
So I'm just going to throw that shadow in with the side of my pencil. Now, the, the, uh, the magic kind of happens when you start to blend it. But before I do, I've got to have enough charcoal in there that when I do blend it, I can do something with it. Here's another thing I know about eyes. I know that there's reflection of the eyelid, the eye, the nose, the cheek, up into the bottom of the eye. So when I do eyes, even if I can't see what's going on, I'll darken the top up near the eyelid, and as it comes down, I just lighten up so that when I finally end up blending it with my cotton swab, I can take that and just pull it down into the eye like that, and it'll go nice and smooth, and it'll look kind of glassy. Now, if I leave the bottom very light like that, then it gives you a natural-looking eye. The other thing I know is the white part of the eye is not white. So I can take that and blend it just a little bit on the edge. Just a little bit. Now, if their eyes are dark, you can always go back in and darken them up. And so if I use my cotton swab just a little bit there to blend that in, you can get a very natural looking eye. I also know that right above the eye, uh, the the pupil is going to be lighter because light's going to hit that top eyelid. So I'm just going to blend a little bit on this side, a little bit on this side, and right in the middle, I'm just going to leave it nice and soft. So that little bit of light right above the pupil on the eyelid itself. And the rest of it gets a little bit of value as well. So now you've got to train your eye to look at the darks and lights. And it is a training. You, it's not something that comes natural. So now I'm just looking at the darks and lights and trying to keep those darks and lights where they go. with my cotton swab. And you're going to get a very naturalistic looking eye. And that blending is almost like, uh, like magic. If you blend too much in your uh, your highlights kind of go away. You can always take your kneaded eraser and come back into them. So, let me let me show you what I mean by that. I'm going to I'm going to blend too much here into the eye. And you think, oh, darn it, I lost all those little lights. So then what you do is you take your kneaded eraser, you just come in, you pinch it down to a little, little edge, little knife edge, and you just touch it. You don't have to rub, you don't have to get in there and press, you just touch it. And it'll suck out the charcoal. And so those little edges will come back in. His little wrinkles that he's got over there, if you take your, your charcoal, where's my charcoal? So I've got a little spot of charcoal on there. If you just take that little spot of charcoal, you can go in and start doing little wrinkles with that charcoal on the corner of his eye. You don't want to do those with your pencil. They become too hard.
So I need a lot more charcoal in there. I, I just, I need more charcoal. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into his hair and just pick out certain spots that I can see that darkness. So there's some over here. And I'm just picking out little spots of darkness. And if you go in the direction that the hair flows, then it'll eventually look like hair. There's a light spot. Just leave it out. And when you're doing hair, don't be afraid to like flip your line a little bit. Some flip up, some flip down. Vary it. Make it so it's, they're not all the same. And you can go either way, up or down. And I'm not doing every little hair. I'm, I'm Because, you know, as soon as he went back into the wind, that hair changed a little bit. What's important are these edges. So where, where it comes into the head, you, you don't want to do a line across there. You want them to be fairly even, but not perfectly even. Now, yes, you could make these look exactly like they do. There's really no reason for that. Unless you want to. Why do you do artwork? You do artwork for yourself. It's for your own pleasure. So I'm just picking out those shapes of darkness. And I'm not even worried that the hair looks like hair. But when you're all done, it will. You can even just have little pieces just kind of hanging out up there at the top, not attached to anything. And your viewer looks at it and says, oh, I get it, that's hair. So if it's light, just leave it out. We can always come back in and blend it anyway. When you do noses, remember that a nose, that nostril, you may want to use a hard edge on the top, but the bottom you don't. So you could do a little, a little half circle and then shade it in. But if it looks too even, then it ends up looking like somebody punched a hole in his face. So leave it a little uneven. Remember when we drew the sphere, his nose is a sphere. You got your light side, your shadow side. Here's a core shadow that's down his nose right here on the tip of the nose. So leave yourself a little bit of space under there for reflected light. This eye is going to be the same as the other eye. Let's start with this 
top lid. It's just dark. There's a his eyelid that fits into his head goes right there. His iris is an a bracket. There's one there. One right there. And there's a little shine in his eye. Actually, there's two little shines in his eye. But I'll probably only just put the one in. I know his eye is darker at the top. And it's going to come down and I'll, bl I'll blend that. You, you probably have noticed that I haven't done eyelashes yet. Those are kind of the last things to do. Once you get everything all blended and the shadows and everything under there. Remember, light touch. This one uh, side of his glasses has a lot of light on it. So you may just want to leave most of it out. Most of that bottom part is, is... Just leave it out. There's a shadow underneath it that helps define it. So when you finally get around to doing like the nose and stuff, just pull out some of that charcoal and as you blend it. Don't worry about your reflected light. It will come through. There's a little highlight on the tip of his nose. So just remember to leave that nice and light. But everything else gets a little bit of value. Like I say, you may want to come back into it and go, oh, it needs to go darker here or there. It can always go darker. You can always add more. Just be gentle with it. Remember, the white part is never white. When you're doing things like the mouth, uh, a couple of things that you need to know is the mouth is always darker in the corners of the mouth, especially when you're smiling. So if you look at the corners of his mouth, and you just go, okay, I'm going to do those corners first. And if you go straight down from the outside of his eye, that's about lined up with the corner of the mouth. You just do the corners of the mouth. And sometimes the lip, the top lip, is darker there too. So I'm going to just do the top lip on the edges. And then I'm just going to blend them in. So I can actually take those and blend those into the center. And there's his top lip. 
piece of cake. Because his top lip is going to be lighter anyway. And you don't want a sharp edge around the lip. The bottom lip is usually lighter. There's usually a lot of more light on the bottom lip. Just do that with your cotton swab, and you got it. He's cake. I need some more charcoal, so his mustache is going to help me. I'm just going to go in and do the little flecky lines and then blend them. So here's these little flecky lines. Fleck, fleck, fleck. Did I ever tell you that uh, portraiture is the hardest form of art there is? Because everything has to be so exact. I mean, everybody's got two eyes and nose and a mouth, that kind of thing. But how it's placed and the values, the shadows that are on there is what makes them look like them. So that makes it even more difficult. So don't get discouraged. This is your first try. These are those feathered lines, and they're just little flecks. You drop your, your pencil in, and you kind of give it a little flip. And with portraiture, you just kind of keep working on it until it, until it looks right. Adjusting it. I have never drawn Robert Downey Jr. A lot of this stuff you can get with your cotton swab. You just need charcoal on that cotton swab. So that's why I needed this hair in there is because I'm going to use that to use as a as a well to get my stuff out. So I can grab it from over here. use it anywhere else I feel like I need to. And it's those subtle, those very subtle uh, shades that make him who he is. Whether it's a dimple or a little recess somewhere. So use your cotton swab there to get all those light, light, light tones.
even do little circles if you want. Some people don't like that streaky effect that it gets. It's up to you. I don't know if you've noticed how I like to push you and make you go a little faster than you feel comfortable with. Have you noticed that? <laughs> You actually draw better when you draw faster, if you push yourself. Notice I haven't done the edge of the ear. I'm just going to let that take care of itself. The important part is pretty well done. That's the, the face. Everything else we can kind of fudge a little bit on. And the hair... You can, you can take your cotton swab, like there's some little hairs that kind of flip out. Use your cotton swab to get those little flippy hairs. They'll be light and soft, and they look like hair. You just come back into it with your kneaded eraser, pull out a couple lights, and you got it. Don't be afraid to leave a few things out. Because you can always add them later on. When in doubt, leave it out. That top of the hair that is really light and soft, you use your cotton swab to just get those light edges on the top. And again, this looks a little simplistic, but it, it really is more simple than it looks. Just controlled scribbling. The edge of his face, just leave it out. I mean, nobody needs a line there. The last thing I want to do is I want to go in and just make sure everything is as dark as it needs to go. I want that contrast to make it pop. And I want the lights to be in there too. So I'm going to have to go in with my kneaded eraser and just pull out any light that I feel like needs to come out. So like even in his hair, I can take my kneaded eraser and pinch it down and just pull out a couple little spots of light. Don't have to go everywhere, just here and there. Last thing you do with your hair, too, is you can throw in just a couple little stronger lines, especially on the edges. Just here and there. See how that hair looks like hair? Amazing. Like I say, you can you can go as far as you want to go with this. You can keep doing this and get it very photographic if you want to. But right now, just this drawing part looks okay. Also, if you want to leave some very sketchy stuff, especially like in his shirt or his coat or whatever... You can leave that just very, very sketchy down in there. 
And people like to see that. They like to see that it's a drawing. This is called vignette, too, where you leave it kind of undone as it comes out. Anything else you need to do? Last thing you do is sign it. Good place for a signature is right over the shoulder. Ah, thanks for drawing with me. I hope you've had fun today. And I hope in some small way that drawing with me has made your life a little bit better. Because art makes life better. And I hope you all have a lovely day.